Broncos country, what's going on? Hope you guys are having a wonderful day. We're going to take a look at previewing the LA Chargers coming into Denver, playing our Denver Broncos. Going to give you my four keys to victory as well as provide uh, some different comparisons on where the Chargers and Broncos are at coming into this game. Uh, eerily similar teams, and that's why I, I think that this is going to be a closer game than what we saw last week. Of course, y'all let me know what your keys to victory are, what you're looking for in the comments below. Like and subscribe. That will help share that with the rest. this with the rest of Broncos country. But let's go ahead and get started. Guys, these are pretty similar teams. They're very good on defense, both of them, and uh, definitely a work in progress on offense, uh, to say the least. Now, the Chargers are coming in here uh, with off of a bye week, early bye week. They started out 2-0 with wins over Las Vegas and Carolina, but they also lost to Pittsburgh 20-10. to And then in week four, they lost to Kansas City 17-10. Uh, to So, uh, they come in after the bye trying to break this two-game losing streak, and uh, we're coming in here trying to win, let's see, four straight? Four straight? Is, is that right? Man, crazy, crazy, crazy. But let's go ahead and take a look at where these teams are at offensively. As you can see, the Denver Broncos and the LA Chargers are right next to each other. Broncos are averaging 270 yards a game, while the LA Chargers are basically at 264. Points per game, the Broncos are averaging 19.2, while the Chargers are at 17 points per game. So this very well could be a low-scoring affair. Uh, when you look at the passing yardage, this is what's kind of su uh, surprising. The Broncos are actually averaging more passing yards per game with Bo Nix <laughs> and that New York Jets game with 164, basically, to the LA Chargers and Justin Herbert, 136 yards passing per game. That's crazy. Now they are running it for about a buck 28 a game, while the Broncos are at 107 yards. So these are teams, in my opinion, that lean on the running game big time, and they haven't really put the ball in the hands of their quarterback to do uh, too much when it comes to the offense. Now, when we look at the defense, Again, we see the Broncos are ranked here number three in the NFL in total defense, giving up 271 yards a game. Chargers are just two slots behind, fifth overall in yards given up per game, 282 and a half. And uh, the biggest takeaway that I have here is that the Chargers are only giving up 94 yards of rushing a game and also 12 and a half points per game. That's even better than the Broncos. 14.6 points per game if we sort it wow yeah the chargers are first in the league in points allowed and then the broncos and steelers are tied for second in the nfl with 14.6 so we're going to be facing a very good defense i would imagine that both joey bosa and i, I think Khalil mack he, he's not really a questionable he's going to play but i imagine both of those guys are going to play in this divisional matchup it's going to be very important for us to get this win, uh, and it's it's not going to come easy. Uh, this is one of the better defenses in the league right now, if not the best. Uh, and thankfully, the Broncos have had great preparation going up against Seattle, going up against Pittsburgh and the Jets, right? So let's break this down a little bit more before I get into my keys to the game. Of course, y'all let me know your thoughts. Uh, let's just take a look here. Uh, Justin Herbert completing about 65% of his passes for a 6.4 average. Again, averaging on his end, 144 uh, passing yards per game. Taking only six sacks. T uh, Taylor Heineke is taking three for a total of nine. The Broncos have a total of 19 sacks. So with their injuries to Joe Alt as well as uh, uh, Slater, I believe that's uh, their, their right tackle's name, we have the potential to really cause some havoc in the pocket uh, for Justin Herbert, get him on the run. You know, he's dealing with that foot ankle stuff. So that, that could work in our favor if those guys don't play on Sunday or even if they play banged up now. Um, yeah. Again, they, they're predicated through the run game. JK Dobbins is like looking like who everybody thought he would be coming out of Ohio state for the Ravens averaging 6.1 yards a carry. And yeah, they don't they don't throw too much. Glad McConkey leads their team in receiving with 176 yards. 
on only 15 receptions. So uh, very, very interesting stuff. Lastly, wanted to get into this. They take away the ball really, really well. Let me pull this up. So Chargers, they have 11 total takeaways. No, they have seven total takeaways to only two giveaways. So that's a plus five. Broncos right now are in plus one territory. Eight takeaways, seven giveaways. Now we've done a lot better with that over the last few games, right? That's something that we definitely need to control uh, in, in our favor this game in order to get this victory against a good quality LA Chargers team that is going to be chomping at the bit uh, to snap this two-game losing streak. So let's go ahead and get to my keys to the game. Let's uh, Let's run this thing. So first key to the game. Let me pull this up. Let's run for over 100 yards and use Knicks in, in, in the running game. Again, this is a team that only gives up 94 yards of rushing per game. We're averaging about 111, 112 yards rushing uh, a game. And I think if we can get over that 100-yard mark, uh, that's going to be very helpful for our offensive line, who <laughs> you know we're going to have some replacements in there alex forsyth our second string center along with matt Pert, our third string right now right tackle let's establish this run game let's have a run threat let's include nicks in that uh, in order to help open up the passing game help this offensive line uh, we don't want joey bosa to just be able to pin the years back and and get after matt Pert <laughs> and bone nicks right uh, let's put ourselves in second and manageable third and short situations Let's run the ball. Let's get them to stack the box. Wouldn't that be fantastic? And uh, right now, you know, Javante Williams is 3.6 yards per carry. Uh, it doesn't look the best, but that has improved over the last few games. You know, we've seen that we, we've gotten a better version of Javante Williams, averaging over four yards a carry, I believe, in the last two games. And Bo Nix is right there at 3.8 yards per carry. Uh, would would love to see him utilize his legs in this situation. Uh, against a very good defense so we, we'll definitely need his speed uh, in this so that is uh, the the first key of the game is just run for over 100 yards let's incorporate Knicks as as part of that so let's go ahead speaking of Bo Nix let's continue to play mistake free football from Bo Nix no interceptions no interceptions the last couple games let's continue with that don't put the ball in harm's way Take care of the ball when you're running it. He's done a very good job of doing that. Like I said, this is a Chargers team that really plays true Jim Harbaugh-style football. It's where they're not turning the ball over, and they generate a lot of turnovers. Again, plus five differential. That's really, really good. Let's make sure we don't put them in position to capitalize on that. No, 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 no. Let's have no turnovers in this game. Now, I alluded to this before. Let's contain... J.K. Dobbins, he's got 342 yards on the ground already. Like I said, he's averaging 6.1 yards per carry. He's looking explosive. He's had a 61-yard run, two touchdowns, and three big runs, which I believe is over 15 yards. It's either 15 or 20 yards. No fumbles either. So uh, he, he has been fantastic. One of the biggest surprises of the year, in my opinion, has been J.K. Dobbins. I thought he was washed. I thought he was cooked from all these injuries. Running with dead leg with the Ravens, you know. But he has been incredible. He's been fantastic. And I think Gus Edwards might be out for this game. So maybe we will see Hassan Haskins uh, spelling as well. But J.K. Dobbins is going to be that guy. It's going to be really important for our run defense to, to show out. And I think our run defense might have to have their best game of the year so far. Uh, in, in order to get this victory because for my last key of the game, we really want to put the Chargers in passing situations. We really want to allow this pass rush to get after this. Uh, this isn't an offense that has very many explosive weapons uh, right now. Of course, Lad McConkey is probably their biggest weapon, and he's going to be utilized in the slot. He can be used outside too. Uh, so he'll probably see a little bit of Pat Sertan, Jaquan McMillan, and Riley Moss. I'm sure we'll see all of them, but uh, got to imagine, I mean, I'm not that threatened by Quentin Johnson, although he does have three touchdowns already. That's re really, really good. Uh, but uh, it's going to be important for us to get after Justin Herbert, sack him with that banged up offensive line with him. We'll, we'll see how he comes out looking in terms of his mobility with these injuries that he's been 
uh, battling through to start the season with his foot, ankle, whatever it is, and, uh, you know, limit the amount of big downfield plays they can generate through the pass. I mean, let's let's allow Jonathan Cooper, Nick uh, Bonito to, to really get after it, Jonah Ellis, uh, the, the rest of our pass rush. Uh, I could see Zach Allen having a tremendous impact on this game. That's what really needs to happen is uh, put the Chargers in a situation to where they're, they're really needing to pass the ball second and long, third and long. And let me go here. Yeah, I think they're last in the NFL in passing yards per game. They're close to it, second to last, right behind the Patriots. That's no surprise. So 136 yards a game is what they're averaging in the past. You know, Broncos are just a few slots down at 164, but that's still uh, almost, or that's 28 yards less. So uh, substantial, substantial. So Let's see who the better quarterback is from the University of Oregon, right? Is it Justin Herbert or Bo Nix? I think you guys know where I stand. Let me know where you stand in the comments. What are your keys to victory? But this should be a game where the Broncos come out and uh, get a solid victory at home. This is going to be very important, especially uh, for our wild card hopes. We got to win these divisional matchups. We got to win these matchups that are in the AFC. And most definitely, we have to take care of business at home especially after dropping that game to the to the Steelers. We have to take care of business at home. This is our chance to do it. So, guys, thank you so much. I will be back tomorrow with my post game uh, live with Zach Seegers from Let's Talk Broncos. So y'all be sure to smash the bell notification for that. Like and subscribe as well. Share this with the rest of Broncos country. As always, go Broncos.